um, this being a short, um, short week. Um, so we'll try to get through as much as we can today. Uh, I already put in the homework from uh, last week. Tomorrow, I have a meeting I have to go to during this period. Um, so for the uh, for the people at home, uh, you know, unless something changes, I'm probably not even gonna call. I'll try to find a way to get you to come in for attendance. Just plan on being here for attendance. Um, and, then, uh, and then I'll probably just let you go and work on the weekend assignment. I'll just let you do it tomorrow, and then anything I don't finish today, I'll finish on Wednesday. So I should be able to finish Wednesday. Anybody have any questions on that, what I just been saying? For next week, I pushed the test back to Friday. I just did it now, but I'm looking at the schedule. We have PSAT on Wednesday, but I just pushed the test back to Friday, but we didn't worry about that on the schedule. Three day week, so they will start the, the notes. Pretty simple, we're going to do the work entire time. Uh, and then, um, Tomorrow, it will probably just be just come in, check in for a second. If I have anything on there, they're not pushing up, I'll make them. But then I'll, I'll leave you on your own. If you have something perfect, um, we'll just be working on the procedures. We'll make any pullouts if we're going to make them. All right. So, <clears throat> back to last week, when we started going over volume of three dimensional solids. Uh, we started off with our two base solids. What were the, the two different two base solids? I'm not going to give many answers here at first, so I basically I'm going to rely on the people I wrote today. What are the two different two base solids? Then we moved on to the two one base solids. What were the two different one base solids? Experiments and cones, good. And then finally today we're gonna move on to the last one, which has um, no um, basis, and that's a sphere. It's like a ball. Okay. We'll also do kind of just relative. I guess not just. Uh, the hemisphere. Okay, a hemisphere is basically if you want to get a sphere and cut it in half. Um, this diagram shows you that uh, the way you get a sphere is by picking a point in the middle, and then all if you were to go in every single direction from that center, um, all the points that are equidistant to that center are what make it a sphere, as opposed to a circle. A circle is a um, a set of all points that are equidistant from a center, but the, a circle requires you to be on the same plane. It's a plane figure. So maybe it goes in all directions on one plane. But on a sphere, it goes on all directions and all axes and all planes. When you do cut that circle in half and you get um, a hemisphere, so like I, I always think about like an orange, if you were to get an orange and slice it in half, if you look at the inside, you're looking at a circle, that circle has a name, it's called the Great Circle. Since we're only doing formula, um, we're only doing volume, We're only doing volume, there's only two formulas 
Yeah, uh, what they're giving you is a diameter, so we want half the wall. So we'll use our trusty calculator. Okay, any questions on that one? Okay, let's go to the next one. This is also a sphere, so volume is equal to four or five. What's the radius here? So look at your Gonzario. I'm 
one person in the class right after this. One times one times one. Thank you. Let's talk units. We haven't really talked units in this first of all. What would the unit be for uh, for part B? The part that can move the unit. Mohammed, what would you be? Uh, no, it's not it's not an opposition here. You should just be going back to the first one, the first one we did. This next problem is kind of interesting because I don't see anything here leading up to it. They're asking me what the diameter of the earth is. Um, but there's no picture or anything, so I don't know, maybe I forgot to take something over, but um, I know from my memory, um, I have to tell you that the circumference of the Earth, if you go like around the equator, and by the way, so if, if, if we're looking here, like imagine that this is the Earth here, right? What word that we discussed today would be symbolic of the equator of the Earth? What, what, what could we use to represent the equator of the Earth? word that was used today. Okay. Yeah, look at that. One of those vocabulary words on the first two pages. Yeah. I'm about to tell you the circumference of the Earth, which tells you, you know, if I wanted to go around the Earth, this is how far I would have to go. And but now, you know, going around the Earth up in the uh, the Arctic Circle is different. You know, up here in the Arctic Circle is different than going around the Earth on the equator. So, you know, what word that we use today could be, yeah, the Great Circle. Yeah. So basically, the Great Circle of the Earth is 25,000 miles. 25,000 miles around the Earth. So now, looking at the same picture here, how about if I wanted to you know, start somewhere on the equator and start digging and making it to the other side of the Earth, how far would I have to dig? That's the question. Well, because this is a circumference, it doesn't really, inv it doesn't really involve the, the entire sphere at all. It doesn't involve volume. We're just talking about a circle. And I just gave you the circumference of the circle. Um, how can I use circumference to find diameter? How can I use circumference to find diameter? We heard earlier this year. How can I use circumference to find diameter? Ryan, do you know the answer to that? How do you, how can you find circumference to find diameter? Do you know a formula for circumference that involves diameter? Yeah. I have some. Don't be shy. Come on. It's 
Cool, let's keep the party going. All right, find the diameter of a sphere with a volume of 36,570 feet. All right, so now I'm going to find the diameter, but they're giving me a volume, so I'm going to have to use the volume for them. Instead of putting V equals, I'm going to put it in the volume, so I'm going to put 36,000 pi. This equals to total pi r over three. Now, I realize that we want to find the diameter, but we don't have an exact formula for diameter, so we're going to have to find the radius first, and then, um, and then we get to multiply times two. What would I do first there to solve for radius? So I want to get the R by itself. What would I do first? Now let's do some basic algebra. And I started probably 15 minutes late setting a second period because I was having technical issues. I think I'm, I think I'm going to have that in front of me then I'll do that. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. And feel free to sell it out. I think I'm going to be doing some of these words. I'm going to be waiting for so long. Um, 3 times 36,000. What is higher than 2? And then it's just the próximo mismo. Todo viene el próximo. Vamos a buscar la S. This also becomes a problem because some people don't know how to take a root on their calculator, so let's talk about that now. Some of you do have a dedicated cube root button. And it'll look like that. You might have to hit a menu, for example, like a math menu to get there, but that's a cube root button. If you don't have a cube root button, what you have is a root button, it'll have like an X, but then you gotta tell the calculator first um, to take a cube root. If there's not an X there, you might see like a little box there or something like that. So take a second and see if you can find your root button or your root button. And what you should get is that whatever needs the radius. But wait, there's more. They didn't want the radius, they wanted the diameter. So how do I find the diameter? Oh, thank you for that. And if that wasn't enough, Throw a little wrinkle in there. What's the unit? I'm asking for a unit. What would the unit be? Like? What do you think, Chris? Unit? That? Oh, I'm going to do that. 
So now for the first time we're here at a hemisphere and we want to find the volume. Okay, here luckily they're giving us a rating, so it's just plug and play. Uh, two now I R is two cube over two. So uh, find your your exponent button. At least you can tell me what that is going to exponent. Uh oh. Um, especially if it's things like this for the rest of today where I'm only getting like two people consistently answering. But I might just do tomorrow then. Because I, if I don't finish this whole thing today, I'm going to probably, like, there might be two slides left at the moment. If I'll just finish it with my second period tomorrow and then put it on and then uh, on the video and you guys can watch it. And then if you have any questions on the video, then I'll think of something one day. Uh, Ryan, you got here late today, but tomorrow we're going to check in for attendance. Make sure you get here on time because it ain't not going to be available for. Long. I, have to, I have a meeting I have to be at, and I'm going to try to get out of the meeting for a little bit just to take attendance, but you'll basically be on your own to work on the weekly assignments. All right, uh, so here we got a sphere. What is the radius of that sphere? What's the radius? Look at the W. Hey, thank you, Chris. And we're going to put that in there. Now, when the button is say something, you can turn on your camera. I'm pretty good with calculators. Even, even through the camera, I can follow it through your calculator and tell you what it's going to be. Now, on this one here, there are, the numerator is not going to be known by three. If you want to do the bit 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 here with us, so this is so I didn't even need to do that. I should have put the whole thing on the calculator. So when you do uh four times five, four times five, divided by two, approximately four forty six. Any questions on that one? Number two is asking you for the radius. So instead of putting volume equals, I'm going to put 36 pi equals because that's the volume. If you put 4 pi r cubed over 3, which is the second time you do this one today, you can ask somebody other than Esme to tell me what to do. Multiply by? Do you, do you guys like click mute the second you're done talking or something? Because it like cuts out right at the end. Cancel. And then.
you know, give you a test or a DNA test, what would you use me there? Alright, perfect. So now that we've had some practice, now we can go back to the structure of um, you do it, give me the answer. Once I have the answer, then I'll do it. Um, it won't be for all of you. Like, I'll be nice and I'll do two and five of these. We'll get some positive solids. So, like, here, like, number one, you should be able to do on your own. Give me the exact volume of that sphere. Uh, and it's not asking us to allow the one you did exactly now. Exact volume. And the ruling is exceptional. Play no fear, they give you the radio. Don't run. Beautiful. Four, five, radius is five cubes over two. Five cubes is one twenty five. One twenty five times four is five hundred. Five over three. First I'm very upset because five hundred cannot be divided by three. What would the unit be if they were asking this for one? Okay, now two will do together if it's two composite. I can bring this to a in there, Secretary. It's not as hard as it sounds. Now, I will say if this is a surface area problem, then it becomes a little bit trickier because you really got to think about what, what part of the composite solid is on the surface. But this is the volume, this is the inside. You just gotta figure out what, what, what the individual pieces are. Like this number two, what, what is that composed of? What, what is that solid on number two made of? What is the solid on number two made of? Well, yeah, you see, you, you could say that. You could say that it's a cylinder, and then a hemisphere over here, and a hemisphere over here. But what's another name for two hemispheres? It's just a sphere, yeah. It's just a sphere that got sliced in half. So really, if, if I wanted to have like a generic formula that applies to this, I would need the volume of a cylinder, which we learned last week was pi r squared times the height, plus uh, well, the two hem the, the, both hemispheres are the same size, so I can just use the uh, the formula for the cube. Now, luckily, so like what I need here is radius, radius, and height. Both radii are the same. Let's go look over the radius goes. What is going to go where the radius goes? So all we need is five. Two uh, squared. Now, this right here will give you the very tricky part is this one here. Is trying to find the height of the cylinder. How high is the cylinder from one circle to the other one? How far is it? If you're lazy, you're going to look at it and go, oh yeah, that's eight inches. But no, it's not. It's 
eight inches from the tip of one hemisphere to the other, well, what do I need to take away to figure out how far it is from this circle to that one? How far is it from this tip here to, to the first great circle? So what is the radius? How far is that radius? Two. How far is this radius here? So if I take away that two and that two, what's left in between? It will simplify a little bit. Uh, 2 squared is 4, 4 times 4 is 16 pi, plus 2 cubed is 8 times 4 is 32 pi. Oh wait, there's more. We would like to simplify as much as possible. Both of these terms have a pi. The thing is, one is a fraction and one is not. In order to add a fraction, what needs to be true? So I want to add fractions. Irma, what needs to be true in order to add fractions? Common oh, look at Irma. Yeah, you gotta have a common denominator. So if I were to write this as a fraction, that would be over one, the other one's over three. What is the LCD of one and three? There's only four people in the room right now, two of which I've barely heard anything from today. So, and the person in this in person is almost silent. So, you guys don't know what the least common denominator is of one and three? Yeah. So, this second fraction would stay the same. On the first fraction, if I make the bottom a 3, it would be times 3. A 16 pi times 3 is 48 pi. Now I can combine them. So I end up with 48 plus 32 is 85. You need to do number 3. Number 3, this is the third time today. So you have something like number three. They're giving you the volume, and they want you to find the radius of the sphere. Hey, look at S L Mario. As we did that, you close. Got that instead of volume equals 972 pi. 
Rumble Tag on the Steel Cage of Steel. It looks like a three Rumble Tag. So 972 times three, which is going to be equal to 2965. Then divide by 45. And I get a um, 729 is equal to R2. So as long as you know where to find your Q root button or your root button, the Q root of 729, as the next said, is 9. What would the unit be that we're asking for a unit? Alright, so you're going to do number four. So you're going to be very similar to the very first thing we did. That one, and then somebody actually pointed out something really interesting that was right in there. To get a ball in there. Yeah, somebody noticed something. See, once once uh, we found the radius, since this is a diameter, right? So the radius is half, the radius is nine. Somebody said it was pointed out with the of seeing the high the radius is nine. So we just that was just going backwards. So you know, we'll do the work anyway, but we can expect to end up with the same thing we have on the three. Um, log me equals four times four five. The radius is nine cubed over three. Nine cubed is seven twenty nine times four is twenty nine sixteen times over three. And like I just said, once you divide by three, you get nine seven two five. What would the unit be? All right, we'll do five together so you can come out again. I don't want to wreck your brain here. Um, so can you at least tell me what the two solids are that are being composed here? What are the two solids that are being put together for number five? Okay, now technically we've never covered cubes, but we have covered prisms. Um, so uh, any prism, the volume is length times width times height. But yes, we can all the all the dimensions are eight. We can call it a cube, and we'll adjust once we substitute. Plus the hemisphere, which is two pi r squared over three. So now, yes, since because since all the units are the same, instead of putting eight times eight times eight, I can just put a cube. Um, two pi r cubed, but oh man, they don't give me the radius of the sphere. They don't tell me how long it is from the center out to the edge. How can I figure out how or what that radius is? Guess this would be your moment to tell me, buddy. Pay attention. The hemisphere goes from one edge of the cube to the other. I try to figure out how long it is from the center to the edge. Oh, 
goes from one end to the other, how can I figure out how far it is from the middle to one of the ends? And then the last one today. <laughs> Find the radius of a sphere with that volume. So it's going to be the same thing as the one above it. All that they're asking us for a radius of a sphere. They give the volume. Something with the end of the decimal order, but the exact same as the step of the one that's in the volume. <clears throat> Alright, so we're going to do that. So tomorrow, just not logging like you normally would, I'm going to have to find some time to duck away to at least take attendance. After that, I'll send you to work on the weekly assignment, and it'll be on your own. Okay. What I'm likely going to do then is just record myself going over these last two slides. Any questions on anything I said? 
Donc, moi, on va être sur la terre des habitants de la Donc, ici, 